Jaleshwar Baba and the Thailand Swami. In the late leg of 19th century, Brahmarshi Devraha Baba Sarkar started dwelling in the water only. Initially, he would reside in water for about four hours, but slowly, by increasing the number of hours, he started dwelling in water continuously for 15 days at a stretch. After coming out of water on Ekadashi, full moon and moonless night would live on sunshine and air very much like water-based creatures. At the end of 20th century, both Guru brothers Bade Maharaj and Chote Maharaj would be given a lot of profound wisdom in solitude on devotion to God or Bhakti and yoga spiritual practices. During this phase, once we asked, Brahmarshi Devraha Baba Sarkar has to how he resided in water for so many days. Does immersing oneself in water for so long harm the body? Skin start rotting? Brahmarshi Devraha Baba Sarkar with a smile said, Child, the yogi, by taking up five types of bodies, can move about anywhere in the existence of five great elements. In the human, animal and bird's body, earth elements predominates. Due to its influence, since ceaseless one is touched by earth and air element, their body does not get destroyed. In fact, if you make someone stand in the water, then in a very short while, his or her mind shall yearn to come out of water in an agitated manner. Similarly, the body of fish, tortoise, etc. predominates with water element. Space element predominates in birds. As per yoga science, this is the precise reason why fish cannot live without water and that birds can fly high in the sky. Due to the possibility of facing a lot of obstacles in the world adapt, yogis in order to enjoy aesthetic divine bliss of nirvikalappa samadhi or trance reside in hidden caves of lofty mountains like Himalayas. Further, they can also imbibe a body predominating with water element. Hence, they can immerse themselves in river, lake water. There is just nothing wondrous about this. Child, even you can practice this diligently. Yet, before doing this mastering, Kumbhaka is must. In the breathing exercise of yoga called Pranayama, after inhaling or exhaling, ere it is stopped either within the body or outside the body, which is called Anthar or Bahai Kumbhaka. Also, imbibing the attitude of non-violence or Ahimsa in the psychic too is very important. We asked, Reward Sir, how can we do such yogic practices. He kindly answered, for doing this practice, when you master the art of doing Kumbhaka for half an hour continuously within the river water at a distance of 16 feet in the shape of a square, four bamboos must be pitched. Then all around these cloth of a jute or a canvas must be spread out on them. Then, after going within it as per one's power of doing Kumbhaka, make a powerful resolve. Before completing Kumbhaka, one must come out of the river water. Child, so far the attitude of non-violence or Ahimsa has yet not been firmly 
established in your psyche. Hence, I have given you the technique of using canvas or jute cloth. If without making proper arrangements for protecting yourself, you try to immerse yourself in water to enter samadhi or trance definitely. Crocodiles dwelling in these waters shall eat you up. Even huge tortoise and fish can devour you. Till I do not give you my divine command, both of you must refrain from immersing yourself in river, lake waters. When Brahmarshi Devraha Baba Sarkar was in divinely blissful state, he would give us wondrous holy teachings. He would say, Child, there was once a yogi called Thailanga in the past century that is quite some decades back. I gave up dwelling deep in the river water simply because people felt this was a miraculous feat of mine and thus my renown spread everywhere like a wide fire. But when I reached Banaras later, Yogi Thailanga, who had just yet not shed his mortal coil in order to reach Kaivalya Mukti, had asked me a question regarding the fit of dwelling deep in the river water. Since I felt he had apt spiritual credentials or patra, I answered his question. After that, Yogi Thailanga too started dwelling deep in the river water for about six days at a stretch. No doubt he was a very good spiritual aspirant or sadhaka. After attaining the supreme divine state of Kaivalya Mukti, he obviously no longer could spiritually uplift worldly people. Child, quite from the beginning his nature was such, he was always immersed within the divine bliss of his soul. He would not pay attention to anyone very quickly. He would sit or lie down akin to an inert rock without moving even a wee bit. He would be seated thus on the river Ganga banks, enduring rainfall without raincoat or umbrella would not wear clothes even in the days of terrible winter cold and would lie down on hot sand in days of hot summer. At such intense low or very high temperatures, no layman would be able to stand even for few seconds. Thus, in the true sense of term, Yogi Thailanga was a Paramahamsa. In this way, there are many such incidents which Brahmarshi Devraha Baba would relate to us. Two Guru brothers, we went alone with him. From these conversations with Brahmarshi Devraha Baba Sarkar, we realized why after the year 1854 AD, he became well known everywhere as Jaleshwar Baba. India-China War in the year 1962, when China attacked India, the latter's army did not know the proper art of warfare. This is because what is called war in the true sense of the term, this was the first time that Indian soldiers were facing. Chinese soldiers were massacring Indian soldiers very badly. The Indian soldiers were finding it very difficult to come back them. Indians are known to be quite sensitive and emotional in nature. It is hard that the Chinese army very cheverly use this as their advantage. In order to take over certain regions, the Chinese army sent some so many experienced soldiers using willingness. They dressed up these soldiers of theirs as Tibetan. 
ascetics and they headed towards that region indian soldiers guarding that region let these disguised chinese soldiers to go away unobstructed thinking them to be innocent tibetan ascetics the indian soldiers were making plans to welcome the so called innocent tibetan ascetics but when these chinese soldiers disguised as innocent tibetan ascetics called lamas were just at a distance of 40 meters from the indian soldier squad they swiftly removed rifles hidden in the lamas robes and fired a rain of bullets at the indian soldier squad thus with ease the cunning chinese soldiers took over that region belonging to india when the indian pm was in tensed state he out of sacred inspirations went for devraha baba sarkar's holy darshana when mahayogi devraha baba sarkar blessed him and said child this is but the spot of kaliyuga or dark era yet i bless you that the chinese army shall no longer be able to move further ahead into indian soil and in fact will revert back after this pandit ji did go to russia for help yet after devraha baba sarkar gave his divine blessings not once was it mentioned in news broadcast that china was marching ahead into indian soil in fact the very next day in the news broadcasted in the radio it was being said that chinese army attack had sort of stopped in a major way thus it was a great opportunity for the indian army to collect their wits and put up a firm steady fast show against the chinese soldiers but the thing is how could everyone know that it was due to bhramarshi devraha baba sarkar's divine grace that our country india was protected from massive chinese invasion